Is public speaking a hard skill or a soft skill? Most people think it's a soft skill, but it's actually a hard skill, and it will lead you in your communication and your ability as a leader in your work and your family life. I'm Jason Hewlett. I'm a keynote speaker, Hall of Fame speaker, and award-winning entertainer. So think about a hard skill. Think about structure and organization. You see, when somebody creates a speech, they have to think through what they're going to say. They have to prepare quite a bit. They have to get good on stage. They have so many different variables that play into that, that it is definitely a hard skill. And it's something that needs to be figured out and mastered. There was somebody that really blew me away with her ability to do all of these things as the hard skill that it is. Her name is Jeannie Robertson. Jeannie Robertson is a Hall of Fame speaker, one of the most acclaimed speakers and humorists that the world has ever seen. She passed away a few years ago and she left an incredible legacy. Here's the thing about Jeannie. She had incredible structure. You see, she would write every single day. In fact, she wrote so much that when they found her passed away, she was surrounded in her bed by books that she had been writing more comedy and more stories in. I find that beautiful and fascinating. You see, to her it was a hard skill that was so important that every single day she would write and practice. She would think of things that she could utilize and she would bring them into her speech every chance she got. She never gave the same speech twice. There is absolutely no way that's a soft skill. That is preparation and execution at its finest. And Jeannie Robertson was the best among us. And then when we think about language and rhetoric. Now, for example, we can use things like persuasive techniques, we can use stories, we can use song and poem. We can use our words to move an audience. There are a couple of speaking coaches and incredible speakers in and of themselves that have made this their hallmark. One is a guy named Lou Heckler. Yeah, what a great last name, right? Lou Heckler, in fact, he's been a speaking coach for me. But I wanna tell you about Lou Heckler because he has next to his desk, a pile of papers. And I asked him, what are those papers for, Lou? And he said, oh, that's how I study and prepare to come up with all of the things that I wanna talk about. So if I read something in a newspaper, I'll tear it out and put it in that pile. And if I read something in a magazine, I tear it out, put it in that pile. If I see something on the internet that I like, I print it and put it in that pile. And I said, well, when do you use it? And he said, I haven't used all of it, but I will just once in a while just go look at the pile, pick a piece of paper up, and I'll just start reading what I could share. That's where he comes up with anecdotes. That's where he comes up with different poetry and other things, stories that he shares that aren't even the stories that other people have possibly heard other than the few that read that magazine article. He'll always give credit, of course, but I love that he puts in this type of preparation. He gives this type of execution with his stack of papers right there, and he uses language in such a beautiful way. He has read so much, and he shares within his language the words that matter. And that's what I'm going to lead into now with another person named Patricia Fripp. Patricia Fripp is a great speaker and she has an accent because she's from the other side of the pond. Now, Patricia Fripp as a speaker coach will not allow you to say one word. And anybody that's watching this that knows Patricia Fripp is going to laugh when I say it because you know what the word is. The word is stuff. Don't use the word stuff, Patricia Fripp says, because it's lazy. Think about the words that you use, how you can say so much in a word, or you can compress it to nothing and say, it was a bunch of cool stuff. Patricia Fripp, Lou Heckler, they use language, rhetoric, preparation to make it so that their hard skill of speaking is so powerful. So before I move on, I would love it if you'll subscribe below. Thank you for following this channel, always creating the best content we can for you. Let's talk about number three, delivery technique and stage presence. I'd like you to think about body, posture, voice, tonality, the way that we present ourselves. There are some people that are naturally not good at this, and admittedly so, that have become internet stars and multi-millionaires because they figured out how to do their delivery and their stage presence and make it even better. 
It's become a massive hard skill for them. I'm talking about Brendan Burchard. Have you ever heard of that guy? Yeah, he stands in front of a flip chart and he writes and he almost seems like he's uh, out of control to a lot of people. But I'll tell you what, he utilizes that as his stage presence. He's admitted that he's not a great speaker. He's admitted that he's distracted and he's looking around and he's doing all of his stuff. But he has perfected the art of selling you through the camera. You should follow Brennan Bouchard. And uh, what's fascinating about him is that he's practiced so much these techniques. They've become a hard skill that have made him millions of dollars just by thinking about his posture, his voice, his energy when he speaks, looking at the camera instead of all around like he wants to. And he has become so great at it. There's another guy I have to tell you about. He's become known as the Click Funnels Master. His name is Russell Brunson. Now Russell is admittedly also not the greatest speaker, but he has become incredible on stage and on camera because he's so focused. He knows what he's going to deliver. He's prepared, he's ready, but he's honestly figured out his body language, his tonality, his way of delivering energy, and you believe him. And yeah, the guy's a genius, so you want to follow him too. But he's delivered that through his stage presence, through his delivery technique. One of the greatest hard skills you can actually develop is how to handle a difficult situation or even a heckler. Now, if you've ever had a heckler, whether it's online and you've posted a video and they've put in the comments something negative, how do you respond to that? That's one way. It's a completely different thing when you're on stage in front of people. <laughs> now, I've seen some of the funniest things in my life when a stand-up comedian is heckled. The way that they handle that is so impressive. This is absolutely a hard skill, and it is so important to be able to have this skill. Now, there are ways that you can shut someone down real fast, or you can engage with them and make them feel a part of the show. I saw a comedian one time on stage. He was being heckled by some person in the back, someone in the darkness saying something real profane and pathetic. And it was so interesting because all this comedian did was say, hey, I don't come to your job and yell, the fries are ready. And that's all he said and the crowd went nuts. All he did was put the person in their place, everyone was back on the side of the comedian, and then he went forward. Now, that might shut someone down in a corporate setting and make you feel real dumb. In corporate settings, I've actually had situations where I've had a heckler. Somebody who goes, not true, or I don't believe that. <laughs> and I'll say, oh, tell me. And I'll literally walk off the stage with the microphone and walk to that person, and we have a discussion. People are blown away that I would do this, but this is a hard skill that I've learned through the years. Being able to handle a difficult conversation or a difficult situation with a heckler in front of a thousand people, it's not a big deal. If you're authentic, if you believe what you're saying, and if you have the ability to actually handle those people that might oppose you. So let's talk about the fifth hard skill of speaking. It's continuous growth and refining our process. You see, when we are interested in learning something, we want to perfect it. So if I'm a basketball player, I'm gonna hire a coach, and I'm going to actually record myself doing what I do to see how I can improve. The best speakers, the best performers, they record themselves and they watch it back. One of my dear friends, his name is Vin Zhang. Now, Vin Zhang lives in Australia. He's become a multimillionaire because he started in magic and has become a speaking genius. Not only is he great on stage as a speaker, he's also a genius coach. You see, he teaches communication and he spends most of his life on camera. So he's always watching himself. He's watching back to improve. Another guy you might want to follow, if you don't follow Vin Zhang, I hope you will. Another guy to follow is a guy named Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk. This guy has everyone recording him at all times. I believe he watches it back to improve. It's fascinating to know that he has so much video footage and you probably follow him. If you don't, you should. But Gary V is somebody who's constantly refining what he's saying, how he's doing it, perfecting his performance. It's called continuous improvement. And so if we're willing to record ourselves, to ask for feedback from the right people, to look at what we're doing and say, oh, I think I can do this better. 
Then we become as the great ones like Gary V, Vin Jang, and others whom I've shared in this video, and it truly becomes a hard skill that any of us can do. I hope this video has been helpful. It's been fun to be able to share some of these with you. I would love for you to put in the comments what you think I said that was right, or if I missed some hard skills that possibly I could have shared. Thank you for being with me. I'm Jason Hewlett.